In February, we at What Culture counted down 10 TV shows. Some bad, some good, some that deserved so much more that had recently been cancelled, but those 10 were just the tip of the iceberg. Since January of this year, dozens of shows have been given the chop by their respective studios, due in part to dwindling audience members, various knock-on effects from the SAG-AFTRA strike, budget constraints, production foibles, and vague but ultimately detrimental contract disputes. It's far from easy to make a TV show regardless of quality and even harder to ensure people will actually tune in to watch it or that studios will have an interest in keeping them alive, but given the recent slew of cancellations in the last four months alone, it may just be harder than ever. So much so that even the following 10 shows aren't enough to cover each one we've lost of late. From short-lived action series to long-running sitcoms, affecting biopics and surprisingly underseen supernatural dramas, here are 10 more TV shows that were recently cancelled for better or for worse. Number 10, The Brother's Son. The Brother's Son boasts an incredible cast and a brilliant premise, in which a family of gangsters must contend with shadowy assassins and their own dysfunctional family woes. Starring Michelle Yeoh alongside resounding newcomers Justin Chen and Sam Sung Lee, the Netflix comedy drama balances impeccable comedic timing with startling bouts of melodrama and brutal violence to create a truly original, lived-in tale of crime, identity and what family really means. Honestly, it's a fantastic display, one anchored by a rarely better yo, but Netflix decided to axe it after just eight episodes in March, citing underwhelming audience returns as the primary reason, despite, it should be said, the show spending five weeks in the service's top ten. Another season would likely have seen the brother's son reach the intended audience, especially given the involvement of Oscar winner Yo in the leading role, but we'll tragically never know what could have been or how the son family's story ends. Number nine. Death and other details. Another victim of the March 2024 chopping block, recent Hulu gem Death and Other Details was also cancelled after just one season, despite high critical praise and sky-high potential for future episodes. The show stars Homeland's Mandy Patinkin as an endearing veteran detective forced to find a killer aboard a cruise ship, all the while contending with a tragic past and a host of oddball murder suspects and clashing law enforcement agents. Admittedly, the amusing and twisty whodunit is nothing entirely out of the ordinary, particularly when you compare it to the recent detective hits like Knives Out and Fellow small screen effort poker face, but the performances of Patinkin, always on flawless form, and scene stealer Violet Bean make it a deeply entertaining affair to get lost in. Despite ending with a maddening cliffhanger, Death and Other Details was cut down before its second chapter because, well, no one was watching it. A mighty shame no matter how you look at the situation. Patinkin's return to the small screen should have been a major event, people. Number 8. Avatar The Last Airbender Avatar The Last Airbender has just enjoyed a popular enough first season run on Netflix, and in a surprising turn of events the streaming giant has announced both its renewal and its end, stating that the series will get a second and third season, the latter of which will serve as its eventual swan song. This means we've got until 2026 to savour Albert Kim's live-action reboot of the seminal animated series of the same name, and hopefully this two-year production gap will give Netflix the time it needs to fine-tune its flaws, from its jarring special effects to its slight inability to recapture the original show's magic. It's rare that a show, any show, during any time, is given a full series order, so for that Avatar The Last Airbender can count its blessings, knowing with almost complete certainty that it will be able to tell its entire story. Unlike many shows on this list, this one is a happy ending, provided those aforementioned issues are dealt with before season two premieres in 2025. Number seven, Ratchet. When the first season of Ryan Murphy's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest prequel series Ratchet aired, most of the world was trapped in lockdown during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's right, this thing debuted four years ago, but its fate was only revealed by Paulson this past February. Following Murphy Muse Sarah Paulson as the infamous Nurse Ratchet before she terrorised Jack Nicholson, the series told a story about human nature as only Murphy ever could, full of unsettling imagery, hopelessness and compelling performances from a packed ensemble cast. And despite the fact Ratchet was well received, and Murphy has long had a knack for keeping his shows alive, a second season just never happened. There were no announcements about a renewal or cancellation, it simply lay forgotten for a few years whilst Murphy moved on to other things. There's no more waiting around for this one, though it's a wonder why. Technically, as of this writing, there hasn't been an official announcement of its death. We have only the long wait and Paulson's word, very strange indeed. Number six, The Good Doctor. Ah, The Good Doctor, what a mess you were. 
Well viewed, but always controversial, despite its talented cast and potential, the ABC medical series plodded along through six seasons of truly insane melodrama before its seventh season was announced as its finale in January 2024. Starring Freddie Highmore as an autistic surgeon with a troubled past and a brilliant mind, The Good Doctor has its merits, including its central performances and brisk pacing, but these often paled in comparison to its troubling depiction of autistic people and gimmicky, illogical, sentimental storytelling. Despite this, the drama has prevailed, and is set to have a full run of over 150 episodes to its name by the end of the year, proving that popularity means most to studios. After the one-two punch of this and Bates Motel, you can rest assured this won't be the last we see of Highmore, by the way, who, despite the good Doctor's issues, does seem like a good luck charm for risky TV shows trying to make themselves known. Number 5. Julia Though no reason was given for the cancellation of HBO's Julia, little would be capable of comforting the underappreciated Gems fans. Over its short but sweet two-season run, Julia was as infectiously joyful as the woman at its centre. Following the life of beloved chef and culinary icon Julia Child during production of her show The French Chef, the lovely biopic blends insightful real-life drama with poignant assessments of Child's influence over not just the art of good cooking, but also her pioneering impact on TV production. With plenty of belly laughs, succulent cooking scenes, and warm depictions of people being good and doing what they love, Julia boasts a staggering performance from the great Sarah Lancashire, who somehow spent Julia's ill-fated run ignored by Emmy voters, as well as co-stars David Hyde Pierce, Fran Kranz, and Brittany Bradford. The small screen equivalent of a comforting embrace, Julia wasn't meant to last, but it's such a wonderful display, it's easy to be grateful for the time we had with it. Number 4. Our Flag Means Death Cancelled after two critically acclaimed seasons, Taika Waititi's swashbuckling rom-com Our Flag Means Death may just be the best thing the filmmaker has ever put his name to, which is what makes its shocking demise such a tragic twist of fate. Making perfect use of Reese Darby, who stars as a privileged gentleman who hilariously tries his hand at piracy in the early 18th century, Waititi's dramedy is superbly mounted and balances its outlandish humour with real pathos and genuine romance. At once a whip-smart satire of classic pirate tropes and a rare, loving LGBTQIA love story, Waititi himself stars as Darby's mentor and eventual love interest, Blackbeard. Yes, THE Blackbeard. Our Flag Means Death was just hitting its stride when its life was cut short. Worse still, this means that 2024 will officially signal the end of two of Waititi's greatest projects, Our Flag Means Death joining vampire comedy What We Do in the Shadows and The Great Beyond. Moment of silence, please. Number 3. Upload. An underappreciated comedy drama from Amazon Studios, Upload was yet another victim of the March TV cuts, its upcoming fourth season officially announced as its final chapter. Set in a speculative future where the recently deceased can upload their consciousness to new avatars so they can keep living in a new body, Upload stars Robbie Amell as a young computer programmer whose virtual afterlife proves to be a virtual hell in which he can never find comfort. Though the jokes are fast, whimsical and frequently land, Greg Daniel's tale of mortality and technology's potential works best as straight drama, such as when it focuses on the moral and philosophical complexities of its outlandish premise. Overflowing with ideas, often to a fault, Upload is bold and astute, witty and twisted, and its loss will be a sad one. Hopefully though, its death won't be the end, and more people will find some solace in it once it's gone. It's one hell of a fun ride. Number 2. Uncoupled after the success of How I Met Your Mother and a series of unfortunate events, as well as a successful Tony-winning Broadway run, the brilliant Neil Patrick Harris returned to the small screen last year with the wonderful little romantic sitcom Uncoupled. The story of a gay 40-something in New York City who, after a sudden divorce, re-enters the dating scene with little idea of what he's doing, Uncoupled offers sweet insight into the kind of life rarely depicted on TV, giving an hilariously honest look into what it means to be starting dating again after 20 years in a committed relationship. All of this is anchored and heightened by Harris, who as ever dives into his latest role with unwavering commitment and an endearing willingness to make mockery of himself. And it sure seemed like we were in store for more of his amusing antics with a second season. Unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be, as Netflix cancelled Uncoupled after just one season, due primarily to production delays caused by the strike. Hopefully someone may save it down the line. Number 1. Wolfpack First, she was the Vampire Slayer, and she saved the world. A lot. In Wolfpack, Sarah Michelle Gellar is back in the supernatural drama subgenre that made her a household name, playing a secretive arson investigator thrust into a world of werewolves and violent deceit. 
A coming-of-age action series from Teen Wolf creator Jeff Davis, Wolfpack acts as the latter show's spiritual successor, and a worthy one at that, blending its horror with moody teenage melodrama and effective world-building. Though by no means high art, it seemed as though Wolfpack would be in it for the long haul thanks to Teen Wolf's success, giving it, or so it appeared, a surefire built-in audience. Alas, it wasn't the case, and Davis's latest venture was axed after just one season by Paramount+. Plus. Cancelled just as season two was gearing up for filming, Wolfpack was reportedly victim to Paramount's recent budget cuts and low audience numbers. Hopefully Geller's next small screen venture fares much better than this.